of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Mm. So the Lord once again, what? Snatched him up, right? Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just like that. I think that with Ezekiel, and he, what he experienced here in, in, in my verse 12 says when the, when the spirit lifted him up he heard the loud rumbling sound behind him he began to what? may the glory of the Lord be praised in this place he began to the instant when he was picked up by the Lord he was in the spirit and he started hearing things in the what? in the spirit I think that God wants to give us Ezekiel experiences yeah. I think he wants to give us Philip experiences. Absolutely. I think he wants to give us Paul experiences. Yep. I think he wants to give us Elijah experiences. Amen. I think he wants to give us he, I think he wants to give us these experiences with him. Yeah. So Jesus see. experiences. And then what he had, it was a common occurrence for Elijah to be called up. Was it not? More common for him. Elijah was called up so much in 2 Kings 2, and si 2 verse 16 through 18, he was caught up. And Ahab thought Elijah might even be transported somewhere. He said, wait a minute. Uh-uh. He said, I'm going to step out of the room and you're going to what? That's 1 Kings. You will be gone. It was just a common thing that he was what? <laughs> In one place and then the next gone. It was common to cure. It was, it was so common that in, um, let's look at Ahab in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 11 and 12. <laughs> what does he say here? And it says, I love it. We'll, we'll, it says, I'll start with verse of verse 11. It says, and now you say, go and tell your master Elijah is here. But as I leave you, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away to who knows where. And when Ahab comes and cannot find you, he will kill me. Come on. Man. He says, yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. And, and, and you can read the beginning and the end. I'm only taking the little pieces out of it because I just want to show how the Lord is what? It was a common occurrence. Yes. Now let me ask you, how many of you know anybody personally or even know anybody that you've read their books? I mean, I think Rick Jordan gets caught up quite a bit. They've read their books. It's not that prevalent out there in this whole body of believers. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. One occurrence every what? Years. I think Brian Gerwin Garen, he's been caught up in the spirit, snatched out, I mean, pulled out by his hair. And his so I feel like that we're, we're going with Christ. This race that we're running, this, this long-distance race that we're running and trying to break out of some of these barriers of religiosity right. and walking by the spirit, yeah. God wants to give more revelation to this mm -hmm. so that we can walk in these things. Yeah. So that we're not walking around having to live all of something that happened 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. God yeah. wants to give us fresh manna. Yeah, come on. Not crusty bread. Fresh. When it gets so to where you are seeing this take place to where somebody is, is your reputation <laughs> Elijah's reputation was that brother might be there one moment, but in another moment, he is gone. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go through your little community and knock on the doors if you want to, but that brother's in another country. That brother's in another part of the town. Friends were just like that. I mean, I think about it. Wasn't it Paul that um, was in prison and they didn't think he was out? And he came and knocked on the door, and they went back to the door, and they thought it was what? They said, it must be Paul's what? Oh, Peter. Peter. His angel. Yeah. Peter's angel. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, we read that, and we skim over it. Like, oh, well, that's just, that's just, that, that's just over here. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I can't read but a few verses, and i got to stop. Right. 
I want to read the whole song or I want to read the whole verse, but I get so caught up in just that one thing that I have to stop and inhale and breathe again and go back and close my eyes to be able to digest what's being said when I read that. Right. To have a reputation that you just caught up in the spirit and gone. I want to experience that. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, Lord. Yes. Whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever you want. When you look at Hebrews 11.5, you see, we can't miss Enoch, right? Hmm. Can't, can't go without talking about Enoch. Hebrews 11.5. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. It doesn't say God killed him so his flesh would die before he took him. It says that he what? He took him instantly to heaven. I asked the Lord while I was preparing and going over this, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, some of these people that have never been found, missing, disappeared, did you just take them? <laughs> it gave me a whole, it gave me a whole new outlook on that. I said, Lord, did you remove them from the situation? Did you just snatch them up? People never heard of again, never seen, bodies never found, things never done. You know, we always want to think somebody killed them or buried them somewhere, and that sometimes happens. But I just wonder if those people were, if, if any of those people, those kids, children that were in situations, and the Lord, and the Lord in His grace and mercy reached down and shoot, snatched them right out of that horrible situation. It's possible yeah. that He could have done it. We never know. Instantly he took him. I believe that it says that Paul never knew how his prophetic encounter happened. He never went into detail of how it happened. It happened. So we can be quite sure that we can't always know when, why, and how it happens. We don't know. I love the fact that Philip shows us that he was not only translated, but he was transported as well. Yeah. He, he walked out both of those. Enoch and Elijah didn't seek death, right? They were both caught up in the same way. Jesus gives us those examples. So these out of, these out of, out, these encounters, encounters, I believe, are possible for today. I just think that we've got, we can't make them happen but we can position ourselves to make ourselves available yeah. by removing the doubt and unbelief. Yeah. If we only believe all these things are possible, yeah. use our faith. One time. I, I don't want to, I don't want to get to heaven and have Jesus say, you had so much more faith left that you could have used. I want to use it all. I want to use every bit of faith I got to the last little drop when I die. It's like, yeah, that's it. Don't need faith no more. I use it all up. Tank is empty. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm going on now. Come on. Yeah. God is trying to awaken the church in so many ways. I believe that God wants to do this, 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 this coming out of situations with this, with this, uh, being transported and translation and being caught up in the spirit, I think there's so much more that God wants us to see in the spiritual realm. And we are so glued to this thing right here, this thing where my feet are touching, that we miss it. Yeah. Everyday occurrence. God, do what it is that you want to do. I believe that, you know, 
you get revealed life altering things when you get caught up in the spirit. That you're carried away by things and visions that will happen in encounters and God will give you an emphasis on things and show you things that you wouldn't get if you didn't have these encounters. I think he's waiting for us to say, we want these encounters, Lord. Mm -hmm. We want it, Lord. We want these encounters. I believe these, these, I believe God does these encounters on purpose. I believe he does it to shift and change the way you and I think about him and about ourselves. I believe the Lord makes these changes take place. Can make, we can have these changes and these encounters one after the other. I believe that we can have what Paul, Ezekiel, Philip, Elijah, and Enoch had. To walk in those things. Yeah. I believe we can make ourselves available for these experiences by simply telling God that we submit to his will and that we're ready to be in partnership with him however he chooses for us to be in partnership with him. Yeah. I believe God is trying to awaken the prophetic and the prophet in all of us yeah. to desire these encounters. Madam Guillaume, who is one of my favorites, through, of course, I got name dropped with her through Eric Gilmore, and I began to do some research on her my own. And, um, you know, she was a French, she was a French, uh, you know, she was French, and she was a Christian. And she was in prison from 1695 to 1703, and she wrote a lot of, she wrote a lot of poetry and talking about her encounters. And she was put in prison by the Roman Catholic Church because she was introducing being quiet before the Lord and that letting, letting the Holy Spirit move and, and they called her mystic. Yeah. And she was inviting mysticism that it wasn't a movement of the Lord. And she had some quotes that she wrote that just are so powerful we're talking about, because I believe that these experiences that God wants to take us into, I, I, it, it, it's an internal thing. You, the secret place. It's being with the Lord. It's, it, it's being, you, your ground, your, your ground is fresh. You, you're stirred up in your spirit. You have freshness of being in encounters with Him and being in the secret place of being making yourself available and open up internally to Him for these things to occur. And she said, he who has learned to seek nothing but the will of God shall find what he seeks. She said, how rare it is to behold a soul in an absolute abandonment of selfish interests that it may devote itself to the interests of God. A person truly humble permit, permits not anything to put in him rage. As it is pride which dies last in the soul, so it is passion which is last destroyed in the outward conduct. A soul thoroughly dealt to itself, dead to itself finds nothing of rage left. If knowing answers to life's questions is absolutely necessary to you, then forget the journey. You'll never make it, for this journey is of unknowables, unanswered questions, things that are incomprehensible, and most of all, things that are unfair. Not going to have all the answers, but you still got to move forward. Go forward. Lord is saying to us, I believe out of Hebrews, and it's in my message Bible, out of, out of, out of Hebrews, he's talking about, it, in chapter 12, discipline in the long distant race. 
focusing upon him. I think it's those times of being caught up in the spirit and translation and transportation. I believe that it's those times that are just will refresh us to be able to have this distance that we need for the long race. It's one thing it says is, and starting with verse 1, do you see what this means? All these pioneers, he's talking about after reading chapter 11 about the faith. All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, mm. it means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race you're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in when in in and with God. He put everything, he put up with everything along the way. The cross, the shame, whatever. And now here, now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over the story again, item by item, that <laughs> look at it. How he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In all this out, in all this all out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you. To say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that bloodshed. So don't worry, don't feel sorry for yourselves. Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children and that God regards you as his children? My dear child, don't shrug off God's discipline. But don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. It's the child he embraces he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. Amen. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training. The normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we were children, our parents did what seemed best for us. But God is doing what's best for us, training us to live by God's holy best. At the time, discipline isn't much fun. It always feels like it's, gonna, it's going against the grain. But later, of course, it pays off handsomely, for, it, it, for, it's, for it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. So don't settle around on your hands. No more dragging your feet. Clear the path for long distance runners so they will not trip and fall. No one will step in a hole and sprain their ankle. Help each other out and run for it. Work at getting along with each other and God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for the weeds of bitterness, of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone into seed can ruin a whole garden in one time. Watch out for the Esau syndrome. Trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You'll know, you will never know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing. But then it was too late. Tears or no tears. And then he goes on running the race, charging us ahead. And then it goes on to 13 where it reminds us that Jesus doesn't what? He doesn't change. He doesn't change. Appreciate your pastoral leaders in verse 7 and 8 and, give, and that who give you the word of God. I pray this over you, Andrew, Bethany, those who give the word. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you as well as their truthfulness. There should be consistency that runs through all of us. For Jesus doesn't change yesterday, today, or tomorrow. He's always totally himself. Don't be lured away from him by the latest speculations about him. The grace of God is the only good ground of life. The altar from which God gives us the gift of himself is not for exploitation by insiders who grab and loot. In the old system, the animals were killed and the bodies disposed of outside of the camp. The blood is then brought inside to the altar as a sacrifice for sin. It is the same with Jesus. 
He was crucified outside the city gates. That is where he poured out the sacrificial blood that was brought to God.